if we look at the overall growth trajectory of uh, residential markets in the top eight cities, both new supply and demand have recorded a yearly, you know, growth of close to 100% and 50% in 2022. RJ Annie shares a story. That you have been working with a lot of years, a lot of visualization, a lot of verbalization, I don't know how many times you have been in this feeling. Seriously, I don't have words to express that feeling. Mumbai and Pune records triple digit growth in residential real estate supplies. Trial run begins on Delhi Mirad RRTS. What is the procedure during transfer of share certificate in case of a resale? In case of a resale, if the share certificate has to be transferred, all paperwork and necessary requirements pertaining to transfer of shares must be completed on time. Hello everyone. Namaskar, salam, satsriya kal vanakkam. We are back with a fresh episode of Keeping It Real by Housing.com. This is India's first real estate focused podcast. It brings to you updates, views and insights about the reality sector, an explainer on a chosen subject and a deep dive into an industry, trend or topic. You can catch the episode on Housing.com, on the Housing.com app, on Earshot.in, Spotify.com, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Ghana.com, and GeoSavan. If you missed the episode, don't worry. We have you covered. Wear your headphones or put on the phone speaker. You can listen to this while driving, eating, cooking, jogging, running, walking, chopping vegetables, or basically doing anything else whenever you want, wherever you are. RJ Annie shares a Mera Pelagar story. Reserve Bank of India, RBI raises its benchmark lending rate by 25 basis points. Mumbai and Pune records triple-digit growth in residential real estate supplies. Trial run begins on Delhi Mirat RRTS. And what is the definition, meaning and procedure of a share certificate in a housing society? Details of all these and much more in this episode. Stay tuned. Your first house is always special. The feeling, the experience the excitement, the emotions, everything is so overwhelming and distinctive. This is true for everyone. In this episode, we spoke to RJ Annie, who shares her Mera Pehlagar story with us. Hi, I am RJ Annie from Radio Zindagi. And I am sharing with you today what was my first home experience. That you have done a lot of work with a lot of years, a lot of work with a lot of visualization, a lot of work with a lot of visualization. I don't know how many times I realize this feeling after buying a house. And when you enter that house, seriously, I don't have words to express that feeling or to explain that what I felt during that time. And here, I'll sum up by wishing you all the listeners that you can take your own home and this feeling hai na, which is unexplainable, you can feel it too. So, wishing you luck and take care. The Reserve Bank of India's Monetary Policy Committee or the MPC on February 8 raised the repo rate or the rate at which the Reserve Bank of India lends short-term funds to banks by 25 basis points, taking the key policy rate to 6.5%. RBI Governor Shakti Kanta Das announced the decision after a three-day meeting of the rate-setting panel. The Monetary Policy Committee, that is the MPC, met on 6th, 7th and 8th February based on an assessment of the macroeconomic situation and its outlook, the MPC decided by a majority of four members out of six to increase the policy repo rate by 25 basis points to 6.5% with immediate effect. The rate hike will likely mark the end of the current rate hike cycle according to top economists. The central bank led rate-setting panel while hiking the rate, reaffirmed its commitment to fight inflation, but indicated that the nascent recovery in the economy needs policy support. Dhruv Agarwala, CEO of Housing.com, Makan.com and PropTiger.com said, quote, This is a policy announcement along expected lines as the RBI continues to balance its twin objectives of encouraging economic growth and keeping inflation in check. 
while banks in India would pass on the 25 basis point hike to home buyers in the form of increased home loan rates, the borrowing rate for home buyers will continue to remain within a comfortable zone. Home buyer sentiment is strong and we don't see this hike derailing the strong momentum in the residential real estate market. We expect that at some point in FY24, the RBI might pause on hiking rates further as more clarity emerges on the global economy and the geopolitical environment." Unquote. <laughs> Mumbai and Pune have been front runners in terms of new supplies of residential real estate units. The latest report by PropTiger.com the country's leading online real estate brokerage company says that the new supplies during the fourth quarter, October December 2022, grew 119% and 156% in Mumbai and Pune, respectively, compared to the previous quarter. According to the report, a total of 165634 units, that is 165,634 units, launched in Mumbai in 2022, while 75,309 units were launched in Pune during the year. In Mumbai, the majority of the new supply during the year was concentrated in peripheral micro markets of Thane East, Dombivili, and Panvel. The majority, or about 28% of the new supplies, were concentrated in the rupees 45 to 75 lakh price range, closely followed by the rupees 1 to 3 crore range, which took a share of 25% each in the overall supply tally. In Pune, the maximum new units were launched in the localities of Ravet, Moshi, and Hinjewadi in 2022. On the demand side, localities such as Hinjewadi, Ravet, and Moshi dominated the sales in Pune. With 33% share, maximum demand was seen for units in the rupees 45 to 75 lakh price bracket, closely followed by rupees 25 to 45 lakh, with 31% share. We spoke to Ankita Sood, head of research at housing.com, proptiger.com, and makan.com, to break down the numbers for us. Hello and a warm welcome, Ankita. Glad to have you again for this show. Thank you for having me again, Gaurav. Thanks a lot. You know, Ankita, the new supply has increased as the fastest pace in the cities of Mumbai and Pune in 2022. What would you attribute this robust growth to? So, Gaurav, if we look at the overall growth trajectory of uh, residential markets in the top eight cities, both new supply and demand have recorded a yearly you know, growth of close to 100% and 50% in 2022. Now, the pandemic-induced changes in consumer behavior, such as uh, the need for safety and security, has fundamentally changed one's relationship with residential real estate. It's no more residential real estate, but it's home now. Now, this has fueled this substantial growth in property demand, not only in Mumbai and Pune, but across the top eight cities in India in 2022. Now, this revival in sentiment has also boosted the confidence of the supply side and has encouraged them to launch new projects, which has actually brought back the new supply levels to the pre-RARA levels that we saw in 2015. Now, coming back to your question, our market insights indicate that both Mumbai and Pune have recorded a triple-digit growth in their number of new units launched in 2022 as compared to uh, 21, a highest amongst the major cities in India. Now, both these cities together have taken a lion's share of 56% in the total 4.3 lakh units that were launched in 2022. Now, apart from the growing developer confidence in residential realty, Several other factors have played out in, uh, you know, the robust growth in new supply and sales in Mumbai and Pune. Now, in case of Mumbai, pent-up supply in between 2020 and 2021 was launched last year. Now, if we take a deeper look at the quarterly new supply trends, nearly 40% of the 1.65 lakh units that were launched were launched in the final quarter of 2022. Now, this can be ascribed to the festive season, 
uh, you know, the ensuing auspicious day of Makar Sakranti celebrated in Western India, uh, you know, in January, as many home buyers tend to proceed with their bookings during the festive season. Now, if I talk about Pune, similar to Mumbai, that saw a majority of new project launches, that's close to 44%, being launched in October to December alone of 2022. Apart from the festive season, one of the major factors that has contributed uh, you know, towards Pune's uh, uptick has been the reopening of the IT companies who were working on a hybrid or work-from-home uh, culture. So they have brought back their workforce full time. So Pune has seen an uptick, uh, you know, due to that. Right, Ankita. Thank you so much. And the deeper question, however, is that, you know, as per the data that uh, your team has brought out and your report has brought out, uh, residential demand in both Mumbai and Pune also take the highest share in overall demand on top cities. Now, can we dwell deeper and elaborate more on which micro markets have performed the best in these cities? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Like I previously said, uh, close to 56% of the annual uh, demand pie was taken up by Mumbai and Pune. Now, uh, like, you know, 56% of the total, uh, you know, close to 3.08 lakhs un units were sold in 2022 within both these cities. The demand in uh, Mumbai has grown by 86%. In case of Mum uh, Pune, it's 46%. If we take a closer look at the micro market trends, then majority of the demand in Mumbai is concentrated in the peripheral regions, uh, say Thane, Kalyan Dombivali, Meera Bayandar, Vasai Viravar, and Navi Mumbai area. Uh, Thane West, Dombivali, Panvel, Viravar, and saw so the maximum property sales in the region, which is mostly driven by end users. Uh, there is uh, a lot of presence of notable notable developers uh, around these regions as well. And one of the major factors is the relatively affordable properties that you can find uh, in the suburbs as compared to mainland Mumbai. Now, in case of Pune, localities along the Mumbai-Pune Expressway in Pimpri Chinchwa region and along the pune Bir Highway in eastern Pune have witnessed attraction, which is, uh, you know, on a positive swing. And we see these areas being very prominent in the upcoming years as well. Uh, robust connectivity, proximity to major IT hubs of Pune, they are driving demand in these micro markets. Uh, micro markets such as Hinjewadi, Manjuri, Ravet, Moshi, in Pimpri Chinchwar, and Vagholi along the pune Beer Highway have witnessed maximum buyer activity. And, uh, you know, if I talk in terms of numbers, close to 24% share in the overall property demand of Pune is coming from these micro markets. Right. Very thanks for this very deep insights, Ankita. Uh, it's always a pleasure and a delight to speak to you and pick your brains on the deeper trends of India's real estate market. Thank you so much for dropping by and taking the time out. Thank you, Gaurav. Thank you. It's always a pleasure. The first of the four prototype semi-high-speed Alstom trains has manually operated between Duhai Depot, Depot Station and Duhai RRTS Station. The Duhai Depot received this train set in June 2022 and has been performing the test on the track. Most of the 1.5 km section of the train travelled on the depot line, which runs alongside the Eastern Peripheral Expressway. In the upcoming months, several subsystems, along with the train's reaction to being operated at varying speeds and brakes, the track system, the OHE system and the platform screen door system behaviour will all be monitored. NRCTC has set a March 2023 target to finish and launch the project's 18-kilometer elevated priority corridor linking Sahibabad, Ghaziabad, Guldhar and Duhai. The NRCTC is implementing India's first 82-kilometer Delhi-Ghaziabad mirrored RRTS corridor, which is a semi-high-speed rail-based transit network. The corridor will have 25 stations, including two depot stations. The RRTS corridor will start from Sarai Kalekha in Delhi and pass through areas such as Anand Vihar and Uttar Pradesh, Sahibabad, Ghaziabad, Duhai, Muradnagar, Modinagar and Mirat to culminate at Modipuram. 
The 17-kilometer priority section between Sahibabad and Duhai is likely to open by March this year, while the entire corridor will be commissioned by 2025. The RRTS will cover the 82 kilometers between Delhi and Mirat in 55 minutes. In Mirat, metro services will be provided on RRTS network with 13 stations in 21 kilometers for local transit needs. Partapur, Shatabdinagar, Vaishali, Barampuri, Modipuram and Mirat North will be some of the key metro stations in the city. Real estate experts say that the RRTS corridor and the Uttar Pradesh government's recent transit-oriented development policy which seeks to develop areas along the corridor could unleash strong multiplier effects for the real estate sector. The Delhi Mirat Expressway has already improved connectivity in the region and the RRTS will further boost it so all these factors have opened up more real estate opportunities in this region. What is a share certificate and why do you need it? Let's break it down for you. A housing society issues a certificate as proof of the fact that a particular member is a registered owner of the shares in the cooperative housing society. The model bylaws of the state will indicate that a share certificate must have a distinctive number along with the name of the housing society member, number of shares issued to the person and the value paid thereon. This shall be issued by the society to every member for the shares subscribed by him within a period of six months of the allotment of the shares. A share certificate is issued completely free of charge. It is the registrar who decides the total authorized share capital. This happens at the time the society is registered. For example, a share may be valued at rupees 50 and the share certificates may be issued to the members with 10 shares per member. Note that in case a member's dues are cleared and there are no encumbrances, but if the society refuses to issue a share certificate, the member has full rights to file a legal notice and injunction against the society. What do you need to check before and after getting a share certificate? You must have the conveyance deed from the builder and it should be in the possession of your housing society. Before the housing society can issue a share certificate, ensure that the property is free of encumbrances. Make sure all dues are paid and there is no lien. The housing society will also ask you to provide an indemnity bond. An indemnity bond is binding and prevents the owner from transferring their share certificate to anyone, including an individual, employer, agency or bank or for any favors. The share certificate is issued by the managing committee, but it must be collected by you. Once the share certificate is issued, check whether all the required signatures are present. These include the signature of the repeat. These include the signatures of the chairman, the secretary, and another member of the committee. The share certificate must also be authorized by the committee before it is issued. Make sure there are no spelling mistakes in your name and that it is issued in the same order of names as on the original sale deed. This can help to avoid any confusion in the future. What is the procedure during transfer of share certificate in case of a resale? In case of a resale, if the share certificate has to be transferred, all paperwork and necessary requirements pertaining to transfer of shares must be completed on time. It is the new member who needs to pay the transfer premium and ensure that all the dues are cleared by the previous home owner. In case of death of the original owner or member, his, her, heirs, will have to apply within six months for the transfer of shares to the nominee. A new share certificate will be issued in this case. Another relevant question is, can I get a duplicate share certificate? Like any other important document, issuing a duplicate share certificate is not simple. Nonetheless, it's doable if you follow the procedure. First, you must file an FIR in the local police station. If the share certificate is lost, misplaced, or if you know it has been stolen, mention it in the FIR and retain a copy of the FIR for future reference. Second, the society must be aware that your original share certificate is lost. You should write an application to the society attaching a copy of the FIR. Next, you must also give an indemnity bond of Rs 200 to the society, assuring that all costs or results of issuing a duplicate copy will be borne by you. The bond must be notarized too and the application along with the bond and the FIR must be provided. 
The managing committee of the society will then review your application in the general body meeting and can approve or disapprove your request. Let us assume that a request for a duplicate share certificate is approved. In such a case, your society will put out a notice on the notice board plus publish notices in two local newspapers. This cost is borne by the member who has requested a duplicate certificate. After this, a 15-day window is required, during which objections to such issuance, if any, are reviewed. If there are no objections to issuing the duplicate share certificate, it is issued. But what happens if there are objections raised with respect to a duplicate share certificate? If there are valid objections raised with respect to a duplicate share certificate, the matter can be taken up in a court of law. That's it from us for this episode. We shall be back again with a fresh episode of Keeping It Real by Housing.com with information and insights on the real estate industry. Take care and stay safe.